A while ago I watched a video from Skullcam Hobby Electronics channel where he built a precision current source, a very simple but accurate one. If you don't know this channel I encourage you to check it out and uh, maybe subscribe to it. It has a lot of nice videos on lab equipment either building DIY versions or reviewing existing ones. Each video has nice drawings and the guy clearly knows what he's talking about so it is a great resource for learning. I don't have any current source in my lab and these are useful for testing multimeters for example. I was looking on eBay for a current source but I wasn't able to find an affordable one so I've decided to build one using the project information from that video and I will link the video in the description below. It's nice to watch it, it has lots of interesting explanations so I won't repeat them in this video. I will mostly focus on showing you how I built mine and uh, how I uh, did small improvements to this current source. The heart of this circuit is the REF200 integrated circuit from Texas Instruments. This IC combines three circuit building blocks on a single chip. You get two 100 microamps current sources and a current mirror on the same chip. This makes it ideal and very simple to use in our project because we could uh, use a single current source and get 100 microamps output. We could uh, parallel these two current sources and get 200 microamps output. We could use uh, one 100 microamps current source, put it through the uh, current mirror and get uh, 200 microamps out that we can add to the initial 100 microamps for a total of 300 microamps. Or we could also parallel the two uh, current sources for 200 microamps we put that through the current mirror, we get an another 200 microamps and in total we get an output of 400 microamps. So as you can see we don't need much to build this uh, circuit. In fact here is the uh, schematic that uh, uh, Skullcam Hobby drawed and uh, we basically need a voltage input that we'll be getting from a battery. We need the REF200 integrated circuit and a uh, selection switch for uh, making those combinations. Now here is where I would like to improve the circuit because on the original uh, he used a 9 volt battery but I don't like 9 volt batteries I don't like having to replace them in my lab equipment and if we look at the uh, REF200 datasheet we noticed it, it can work from 2.5 volts up to 40 volts so quite a wide voltage range with which uh, makes it compatible with a single uh, rechargeable uh, lithium cell. So uh, I'm going to use this 18650 cell recovered from a uh, broken laptop battery and this thing should have over 2000 milliamp hours capacity which will last my current source for years. But just in case the uh, battery gets uh, discharged I will uh, also use one of these uh, uh, modules with uh, lithium battery charging IC and protection circuitry. So these are all the parts that I'm going to be using for um, building this uh, circuit. There are going to be links for purchasing these items in the description below except for the uh, REF200. Uh, you can get this from uh, your local distributor or directly from Texas Instruments. The uh, REF200 comes in SO8 package, so I'm going to use this very small uh, adapter PCB to solder the IC and then we can easily solder wires to this uh, PCB uh, adapter. I'm going to use this uh, three pole four position uh, rotary switch. These are four millimeter banana connectors and are a low profile uh, version because it's going to be a very uh, compact enclosure. Uh, this is the uh, battery charging and protection uh, module and this is the enclosure that I'm going to be using. It's uh, approximately 100 by 60 by 23 millimeters and will fit everything uh, nicely. As usual I've used Eagle CAD to draw a front panel for this uh, enclosure just to get some markings where the holes should be drilled and to make sure everything fits inside. So the first step is to wire everything up according to the uh, schematic. 
I will start by soldering the uh, REF200 IC on its uh, small adapter PCB. Next, I uh, am making the required connection on the um, rotary switch according once again to the schematic. I'm also soldering some wires to the battery terminals. Uh, care should be taken here to avoid excessive heat being applied to the battery. So I'm always uh, quick when soldering two batteries to avoid overheating them. Next, I took care of the enclosure and drilled the uh, required holes for the 4mm banana connectors and for the uh, rotary selection switch. And uh, I cleaned them up a bit. Here is the front panel label I designed in Eagle. It was printed on a simple A4 paper, which I then cut using the printed outline with a scissor. I had this um, transparent hobby glue around, so I applied a thin layer between the label and the plastic enclosure to uh, try to avoid any wrinkles in the paper appearing. It turned out better than I was expecting, well, except for the uh, rotary selection switch legend, those dots are a bit too far from each other, so the actual marking on the knob falls between the dots, but that is something that uh, can be easily uh, that can be easily addressed with a new print, or I can leave it like that because it doesn't really bother me. I continued with securing the locking nut for the rotary selection switch. Please make sure you don't use too much force because the body of the switch is plastic so it's a plastic thread that you can easily break with that uh, metal nut and too much force. Next step was to secure the two 4mm banana plugs. As I mentioned earlier these are low profile ones. I wanted them to be this way because it looks nicer on this small enclosure. I also spaced them at exactly 19 millimeters, so they will accept standard 19 millimeter spaced connectors. Next, I installed the battery charging and protection module. I used some double-sided tape to secure it to the enclosure wall, and the micro USB connector is sticking out right where I drilled a small slot, so it will be easy to charge this thing later if I need to. The battery was also stuck down using double-sided tape. It should never come undone, but if I ever need to replace it, some heat applied to the exterior of the enclosure will soften the glue. Next, I soldered and connected uh, the remaining wires according to the schematic. This thing doesn't need an on-off switch because if there is no load, the current draw is negligible. I don't know exactly how much, but I couldn't find it in the datasheet, so it must be close to zero. Last step was to secure the small PCB containing the REF200 IC. I used a bit of uh, heat shrink tubing to insulate it, and then I just uh, pushed it between the rotary switch and the side wall of the enclosure. As a final test for this uh, precision current reference, I'm going to use my Keithley 197A auto ranging microvolt uh, DMM. So let's connect to the uh, current reference. It's now on the lowest setting, so that is 100 microamps. And we're reading uh, 99.3 microamps. That's okay. Let's go to uh, 200 microamps. Okay, so we see 199 microamps. For the uh, 300 microamp scale, we're seeing uh, 299 microamps. And for the 400 microamps, we're seeing uh, 399 microamps. So remember, this uh, current reference has a datasheet uh, spec accuracy of plus or minus 0.5%. I hope you enjoyed this video. I encourage you to build your own precision current reference. It's very easy to build one. As you saw in my video, there, there are very few parts used to build this uh, current reference and you get uh, awesome results because the accuracy is guaranteed uh, from the uh, part data sheet. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.